Yeah, well, this is what police say this suspect was doing. She was targeting shoppers as their back were, backs were turned. She would take their wallets out of their bags. Police believe this was happening in Midwest City. Now they think she was doing the same thing in Oklahoma City. A crime spree throughout the metro. Oklahoma City Police and Midwest City Police believe this woman has been targeting shoppers. Now police believe they've identified and arrested this alleged wallet thief. When I got up to pay for my groceries, I had no wallet. We first brought you Linda Brockhouse's story last night. Brockhouse was shopping at the Crest near Northwest 23rd and Meridian when police say she became one of the suspect's victims. I had left my purse in my basket open and very vulnerable. While the search was on in Oklahoma City, Midwest City police say they caught the woman stealing more wallets, this time at the store on Reno near Air Depot. The woman had warrants in Oklahoma City. She was later booked into the county jail. And we are not naming this suspect until she is formally charged. Reporting live from Reno near Air Depot, Zach Rael, KOCO 5 News. Abigail Jess, back to you. Zach, thank you. This one only on 5. A new look at that three-hour chase. It happened one week ago. You saw it live here on KOCO. Now we're getting a look at what Oklahoma City police were seeing from their helicopter. Take a look. It looks like he's got a gun, something. I'm not sure. Use cover, use cover. Cover. Authorities say Brenton Hager led them on a chase through two counties. At one point, there it is, a pastor opening fire on Hager, trying to stop him. Authorities eventually tased him and arrested him after he crashed the truck into a pond. It appears Oklahoma's special session is over after nearly eight weeks. Today, the state Senate passed a bill to fill the $215 million budget gap. Now, this means cuts of more than 2% to several agencies. It uses money as well from the rainy day fund and other one time sources of revenue. The bill goes to Governor Mary Fallon's desk now where she will either sign it or she'll veto it. It does not include pay raises for teachers or state employees. And Oklahomans who depend on the Advantage program say this budget deal could stop them from losing money. We've been keeping up with a woman named Joan Jones. She says that she would have been homeless because her assisted living facility would shut down. KCO's Mecca Rain just talked to Joan today. Abigail and Jess, the seniors here tell me it's all they've been talking about, worrying themselves sick. They need the Advantage program to continue everyday normal life for them. Joan Jones is thinking about what to do about her future in the coming days. I have a backup plan, but I don't want to do it. We've been following Joan's story from the very start. She first told us a couple of weeks ago that she benefits from the Advantage program funded by DHS. It ensures seniors like her at assisted living facilities get the supplemental services they need. At this moment in time, you just kind of have to speculate and kind of prepare yourself that there's going to be some areas that you would have to cut um, in your budget. If the deal is signed, the Advantage program is saved. We are excited about the uh, possibility of being able to let our clients know that their services will continue. While DHS tells us they don't give out eviction notices, assisted living centers tell us they need the money from Advantage to stay up and running for seniors. Joan certainly hopes that money will come through. And this is my family, really, because I don't see my real family. Mecca Rain, KOCO 5 News. Ready for justice. The family of a fallen Logan County deputy says this is going to be a hard process, but they want that justice and closure. The suspect, Nathan LaForce, take a look here, had another court date today. He is charged with killing Deputy David Wade. He was serving an eviction notice when he was shot and killed. There's body camera video. Deputy Wade's body cam video really recorded the entire thing. It's difficult to be in the same room with him, but when we come to court, we come to stand firm in our resolve to see justice for David. LaForce's next trial is scheduled to start in October of next year. A mother arrested after police say they found her kids living in deplorable conditions. Now, she has not been charged, so we are not naming her. Uh, this was at a home near I-40 and Tinker Diagonal. A police report says a woman told an officer that her husband has been deployed for a few months and that she's just doing the best she can. The kids were put in the care of a neighbor. A couple in Oklahoma City caught on camera stealing from a store not once, not twice, but five times. This was all in the span of a few weeks. And in one case, they had a child with them. KOCO's Jonathan Cooper has the story from Target near Rockwell and Northwest Expressway. 
Police say that couple has stolen thousands of dollars in multiple different thefts, and so far they have not been caught or even identified. This man and woman wanted in a bold crime spree targeting the same exact Oklahoma City store. This is the couple on September 8th and them on September 21st. This is their car from October 27th and you guessed it. This is them again on October 29th. Police say in every one of these surveillance photographs, the couple is stealing from the target at Northwest Expressway in Rockwell. So far, police say they have stolen several high priced vacuum cleaners as well as expensive televisions in five different thefts. Police believe the thieves are simply taking scissors and cutting off the security features of the item. They then simply walk out the doors without paying. And to top all of it off, the couple is carrying a young child during several of their crimes. Now, police believe the car they left in is a silver two door Monte Carlo. Reporting near Rockwell and Northwest Expressway, Jonathan Cooper, KOCO 5 News. Jess and Abigail, back to you. Jonathan, some pretty clear images mm -hmm. there. Someone probably going to recognize those people. It was hot today. We're talking about record setting heat. Also came with some strong wind. It was hot. I loved it. Now, it there are like some big changes, though, tonight. Here's Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane with what to expect. Damon? Yeah, Abigail, Jess, you're exactly right. 82 degrees was a high temperature here in Oklahoma City today. You know, that set a record. And not only just barely set a record, we easily set a record breaking a 121 year old record. When you're breaking records from the 1890s, that's a big deal. You think it was warm here in Altus, 94 degrees today, Hobart, 94 degrees today. But I want to take you right now up into Denver because our cold front that's moving into uh, into Oklahoma tonight. Right now, just made its way right through Denver. Look at the dark skies there and look at the winds right now in Denver. Right now, up near 40 miles per hour. This front is moving into the Sooner State tonight and it's going to come in with even stronger winds this, than this. Coming up, the timeline on when the winds will exceed 40 miles per hour. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks, Damon. An Oklahoman killed while crossing the street in California. He was there for a business trip, and tonight his mother is tearfully begging for the suspect to come forward. Actor Colin Farrell giving high marks to an Oklahoma burger joint. According to him, which restaurant has the best burger? We'll tell you. Also, KOCO and Quail Creek Bank, this is so important. We want to help Oklahoma teachers. They could get $1,000. Here's how you enter. Go to KOCO.com, nominate your favorite teacher. Each month, we'll choose one teacher to receive 1000 bucks for their project on DonorsChoose.org. Please go nominate.
A Tulsa man was killed in Southern California while on a business trip. Dylan Moran was just crossing the street in Orange County when a car hit him. Police think that he may have been hit actually by two cars. I can't have my baby back. It won't change anything. But I really want the person to come forward and somebody to say something. If somebody knows something, help me, please. I, I beg you. Boy, it's hard to hear that. Moran, a Marine, left behind a one and a half year old daughter. This was a major milestone. It's approaching for Oklahoma City's new streetcar system. Construction almost finished on the maintenance facility. Here it is here. This is at Southwest 7th and Hudson. That's where the streetcars will be repaired. They'll be stored there. And with the new building come new jobs. We expect the operator to be hiring about 30 new people, new uh, new mechanics, new operations people. So this does bring new jobs to the city, uh, and not only just new jobs, but a new kind of job. A variety. The streetcars expected to be delivered early next year. The lines should open late next year. Voters, you approved a sales tax for the streetcars back in 2009. <laughs> A five story parking garage and retail space proposed for downtown Oklahoma City. Why a committee voted it down for the second time. And what an amazing afternoon we had, but the changes coming tonight will be huge. The winds that will keep you up coming up. Speaking of huge, huge game for the Thunder tonight, visiting the San Antonio Spurs. And good news, Steven Adams will, will play in this game after missing the last three. And OSU needs TCU to lose to make the Big 12 title game and the injuries that are mounting for TCU. Details next on KOCO 5 Sports. You're watching KOCO 5. You know, one of the biggest complaints about downtown Oklahoma City is the lack of parking, but a proposed parking garage was actually voted down again today. Now, this is on Main Street by Bicentennial Park, and the plans were revised to a five story building with the bottom floor dedicated to retail space. Three of the four members say they don't know if this is appropriate use of the property, which is owned by the police association, so it was denied. 
Some nearby business owners say the garage would tower over everything else and that they don't want it to be built. This next one I thought was pretty cool after Colin Farrell calling out an Oklahoma City restaurant. Yeah, how neat is this? He says the best hamburger that he's ever had in America is right here. Paul Folger joining us now. Now, Paul, you've told us about Nick's Grill before. Well, Jessica Abigail, Nick's Grill is a tiny place at Penn and Northwest 11th. It's just a few tables, but it is indeed one of Colin Farrell's favorites. He just talked to Jimmy Kimmel about it, and Nick now has a message for him. When Colin Farrell appeared on Jimmy Kimmel this week, he was quick to answer this question. What's the best amber you ever had? Uh, there's a place called Nick's in uh, Nick's Grill in, I think it was, was it Kansas? No, it was Oklahoma. Really? Nick's Grill in Oklahoma? Yeah. It was the best burger. Do you know it? <laughs> We know it. In fact, in February, I told you about Nick's Grill. The building is small, but the burgers are big, and Nick loves seeing it this week. Freaking awesome. It was one of the, I don't know, who would have thought that? Colin has talked about Nick's before on national TV. It is not surprising he loves it. When you go in, there are just three people working there, and Nick is the greeter, order taker, cook, and server. But the place sizzles with activity. Now Nick is ready to return the favor. He's making a big offer of thanks to Colin and the entire audience at Jimmy Kimmel. We would love to be able to come out to the Kimmel show and cook everybody in the audience one. A big offer for Nick's big burgers, one he'd gladly take to Hollywood. I love seeing that. You know, Colin was actually traveling across America years ago, hitting the best spots to eat across the country. To this day, he is still talking about Nick's Grill. That's so cool. It's going to yeah. make them feel great. Kind of puts Oklahoma City in the national For spotlight. Sure. There yeah. are a lot of options, though. What was? Yeah. Did he say what his favorite was? Uh, Collins, it's cheeseburgers. Okay. The cheeseburger. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've got he to try those. it over there. Nick's yeah. Grill. It's fun. Now, your first alert forecast, certified most accurate. And as we discovered yesterday, you know, in Oklahoma, it is illegal to take a bite out of someone else's hamburger. Paul and Jess told me that. So there you go. It's probably because of Nick's Grill. Hey, in the meantime, here is what we did today. Today was the second warmest day ever in Oklahoma. First off, it was the warmest day for this date. It was the second warmest day ever in Oklahoma for November, even as you look at the stats into December. That's how unusual today was. Big changes, big time changes rolling in here tonight. Once again, we take you back out to Denver because this is where the cold front currently is. Winds are still up near 40 miles per hour, and those strong winds, they're ahead of this way. Now, right now, winds are not bad at all, but when the sun has set and you're less than a week away from Thanksgiving and it's still in the mid-70s, this is just weird. I know mid 70s after hitting a high of 82 degrees. Now those winds still finding a few pockets of strong winds around the metro from Tinker Air Force Base Edmond out towards El Reno. But here are the strong winds now rolling into southeastern Colorado going towards Guymon as you can see there. And at 8 o'clock tonight here in Oklahoma City, we're going to see those winds begin to reach around 35, 40 miles per hour. They will get close to 45 miles per hour at midnight. They're going to stay that way even after sunrise tomorrow, not until around noon do the winds get under 30 miles per hour. So these are going to be the winds right here that will shake the house around. You're going to think, are we having an earthquake or are they just strong winds? It is going to be that windy. And if you don't sleep well during thunderstorms, you may have a difficult time sleeping tonight with these strong winds coming in here. With the strong winds, temperatures are dropping tomorrow morning, mid to upper 40s for lows. So very windy at 8 a.m. 55 degrees temperatures really struggle throughout the day to climb into the upper 50s. Only 57 degrees at 5 o'clock winds are coming down, but we're going to see temperatures over 20, 25 degrees cooler tomorrow compared to today. That's a big time cold front here mid to upper 50s. If you're thinking about hanging up your Christmas lights this weekend, if you're doing anything outdoors, getting on the ladder tomorrow, probably not the day you want to do that Sunday. Much, much nicer here as winds are going to be much lighter, only at 10 miles per hour. As we go into next week, building up to Thanksgiving, there's a lot going on here. First, temperature is not bad. Now for Wednesday, Wednesday, one of the busiest travel days of the entire year. If you are traveling, good news across the middle of America here. Everything is looking pretty dry. Some rain down across the southeast, otherwise out across the northwest. But no real big time travel problems. That is great news for all of us that will be headed somewhere or have people coming into town as we go into Thanksgiving. And speaking of Thanksgiving, here you go. Thursday, 
60 degrees for a high temperature. Now it starts cold. We're down in the mid 30s at 8 a.m. Right around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You begin probably already cooking, right? And then you're eating at 2 o'clock. Winds are light, 60 degrees. Then as we go into Friday, going into next weekend here, hey, weather is fantastic. Sunshine feeling more like November. Temperatures in the 50s to near 60. And you're up to date with the latest First Alert forecast. Now, KOCO 5 Sports with Carson Cunningham. Thunder back in action tonight, trying to win their fourth game in a row at the always tough San Antonio Spurs. Good news here, Steven Adams returns to the lineup after missing three games with a calf injury. And it's homecoming for Andre Robertson. That's right, he's from San Antonio and saw some familiar faces at today's shoot around. But man, that's definitely a, you know, a place I hold near and dear to my heart. You know, so I, I grew up with a lot of basketball, the beginning stages, and just going out there and hooping. So. I uh, have a lot of great memories there with great people and you know a couple old faces I seen last night. So it was fun and, and a great time as well. Seven o'clock tip off there in San Antonio. Sooners and Cowboys facing the Kansas schools this weekend. And there's still a chance we could see Bedlam in the Big 12 championship game if TCU loses this weekend at Texas Tech. And get this, their star quarterback or their starting quarterback, Kenny Hill, didn't even make the trip. He's out with an injury, so OSU fans pulling for those Red Raiders, hoping we get Bedlam part two. Meanwhile, it's OU in D.C. Four national title teams get to visit the White House today. That's the softball team in the Oval Office. Ryan Hibble and the OU men's golf team also honored. Here he is alongside Joe Castiglione. And check out that golf bag he has right there. Trump, they need to put this thing to use. You know, he likes to play some golf. It's pretty sweet. Let's see it there. There it is. It has his name on it and everything. And the softball team also gives out a personalized glove to the Donald. Pretty cool stuff here. Donald's hauling it. Hauling in all the presents here. Men's and women's gymnastics teams also on hand getting to visit with the president. 18 teams from the NCAA made it, four from OU. Pretty impressive. Meanwhile, congratulations to Rita Smith. You've won 150 bucks from Ford and a chance to win a brand new F-150 if the opening kickoff is returned for a touchdown in the primetime game right here on Channel 5. That's UCLA at USC. Congratulations and good luck. And it's week two of the high school Playoffs for football. We'll have it all covered for you tonight on the Eskridge Auto High School Playbook. Guys, back to you. Sounds good, Carson. Thanks so much. You know, another Oklahoman could be headed to Washington. This is a big deal. Who President Trump put on his short list for nominees, potentially for the Supreme Court. We'll tell you.